Welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim. Join host Dan Melnick and Kasim Masood as they explore big ideas, limitless possibilities, and engage with visionaries, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders who dare to dream big, get inspired, motivated, and find practical tips for personal growth. Think big, dream bigger, and ignite your potential. Yeah. Welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kosman. If you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us where you live and what you do for a living. Hello, I'm John. Uh, so I live in Istanbul at the moment. Before this, I, I was living in Izmir. And before that, I was in Copenhagen. So I started my career as a chef, actually. I was a pastor chef. And then in 2020, I jumped into entrepreneurship and we started a household business with an investor. I was in still school at the moment, actually, uh, st- studying culinary arts. And we grew really fast. Like in, in third year, we had a big manufacturing area. We had like a team of eight and we were we, we raised like more than a million dollars. And it was going great. And then I had my Steve Jobs moment. So the uh, the board uh, fired me. <laughs> and then I lost my everything. Uh, so I wanted to do something else, like uh, somewhere, like maybe in the UK, I was actually thinking about the US too, maybe starting another sauce business. And then I just landed on UK, actually. Yeah. And right now we are uh, about to launch a sauce company. It's called Corridor and it's Eastern Mediterranean Pantry. We, we are going to start with sauces, uh, but then we're going to launch like trip, like meals, uh, ready to eat meals, and then maybe spice kits, spices, everything now and then. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So are you thinking about or planning on relocating to the UK or are you going to run this UK brand from Turkey? For the first year, probably I'm going to uh, do it remote because I was planning to like, yeah, we are gonna going to raise money in a few months, probably because everything almost ready. And then I was planning to move to UK as soon as possible. But then I saw like, I can actually spend that money on marketing, like maybe influencer marketing, maybe like just performance marketing. And perhaps that's gonna be a better for the brand also. So I'm just, I just hired uh, another uh, co-founder in the UK to be my like everyday CEO to like run the like a legal business. And then, uh, yeah, that's it for now. Yeah. So you're saying that, like, um, essentially, you'd rather, um, you know, because it's like, uh, I guess, cost of living is more expensive in the UK. That you would that's much true. rather use that money and save it and live in Turkey and use that money for marketing. Yeah, yeah I'm, I just can uh, get a tourist visa and go back and forth. So that's easier. Yeah. Awesome. Can you just tell me uh, more about this company? I mean, who an ideal customer is for you? For me, for now, uh, in the we wanted to start in the UK because there are lots of Middle Eastern and Mediterranean people over there, and because of the politics uh, in the last five years in Turkey, there are already almost like a million Turkish people in the uh, just UK and five hundred thousand of them in just uh, London right now, and that's why we have really good network over there and really like established community like uh, Turkish people, Iranian people, like just Middle Eastern people. So with the sales line, we're going to start with uh, Gen Z's like me. I'm 25 years old. Uh, and then uh, we have, I have a good friend over there. We were writing uh, on food politics in a, a magazine in Turkey. So he is right now working in National Geographic Food. So he has a good community, like good network of foodies and influencers like this. And perhaps our go-to market will be like on Middle Eastern, Gen Z and millennial people. And after this, uh, perhaps we'll just expand our customer base also. Yeah. For sure. But I'm, is your go-to-market plan to go and be more of a D2C company or are you focus more on getting into retail? Like, What is your core focus in 2024? Yeah. In the first six months, probably we're going to just D2C and also like Amazon is obvious. Uh, and then perhaps with small retailers before we go big. Because uh, when you compare it to US market to UK market, it's actually a bit easier to get into retail because uh, like in the US market, there are lots of brokers and this and that. In the UK, you can just talk right directly to talk to a, a retailer like perhaps uh, like 
we are range me or you can just email them and it is easier because also the uk market is still like it's not full of new battery for your products it's there are either big companies like nestle heinz or etc etc and also private label and that's it there are not that much emerging brands over there for sure, yeah. Like in America, if you want to get into retail, many of these retailers won't even talk to you if you're not using a distributor. I mean, it's insane. That's true, yeah. <laughs> That's why there are not like Kihei or UNFI like in the UK. Yeah. For sure. So in terms of the product, right, like you mentioned, obviously, like your target, but is it like, I, I guess, how are you going to set yourself apart in a competitive space, even though it is mm -hmm. sort of, you're saying that it's like a new category, but even, you know, you obviously have competition. So what does that look like for That's you? That's true. So uh, at first I wanted to like, when, like, let's talk about retail shelves. Uh, at first I was, I was thinking about like just getting into retail in this sauce category, sauce aisle, but then uh, like, thanks to my friends and uh, our like research team. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm saying team just with uh, two people of two <laughs> at the moment. And uh, we saw a really big gap in the ethnic aisle, actually. That's why we quickly changed all the strategy and we are changing the uh, labels also. And we gonna, like, uh, the retailers want us to make a new item, like, better for your item in the ethnic aisle because it's just uh, full of, like, bad ingredient, bad looking uh, products over there. So there are, they are needing uh, innovation in the ethnic aisle. So um, my first uh, strategy is to disrupt, maybe it's just a buzzword, buzzword, I know, but disrupt the ethnic aisle. Not like, do you know Amazon in the US? They're a sales mm -hmm. company. They just launched a noodle actually. And then, for example, their strategy is to get out of the ethnic aisle because they think it's kind of an alien aisle for them because it's alienates because it's kind of xenophobic but for me it's not actually because the foodies go to ethnic aisle to find new products and if they go and find the new and innovative products that's a win for me yeah yeah for sure i mean i think it's you know as you said right you have to know who your demo is your ideal customer is all those things yeah. so in terms of you know, your strategy specifically, like, are you planning on offering subscriptions or like, how do you really like, are going to, like, I guess, how are you planning on measuring the lifetime value of your customers? That's a good question and hard question, actually, because it's all abstract at the moment, you know, like we haven't launched yet and we're still like uh, getting tests on the products R and D and maybe getting some uh, questions and uh, um, no, not questions, the feedbacks from customers. And I don't think it's going to be with a subscription. I don't know, because uh, like the subscription model used to work really good in the UK. But for the last year, it's kind of decreasing at the moment. So we'll just figure that out. I don't know. I, I, I just can't answer that right now. Right now. Yeah. Maybe in a few months, maybe I can. But for now, no. I'm sorry. For sure. So <laughs> when you're so like when you're gonna launch, are you gonna run like meta ads? Like how are you gonna really get the word out in terms oh, of yeah, yeah. of your customers? Yeah. Yeah. We have a good list of influencers at first, and they're like from Middle East and everything. And as I said, I have a good network of friends over there. So we'll have some kind of established community. And as I said, like I'm going to get rid of the moving out. Sorry, I forgot the thing again. Just I just, yeah, Meta, Amazon ads, and like Instagram ads, TikTok. So, and also we're going to hire a, a people for the TikTok also over there. Uh, perhaps a Middle Eastern also, but who is raised in the UK. So she or he is going to know the customer more than me actually too. Because, because you know, just uh, born and raised in Turkey. So I don't have English accents. <laughs> so perhaps we're going to need someone like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's just a way of promoting it. You know, for example, like my parents are from Belarus, but I was born and raised in America. So it's like, obviously I still have like the fellow Russian or Russian, you know, interest, but it's different because I'm fairly Americanized. So it's kind of a reaching that demo and, and finding out your, your customer. So obviously now like, in terms of your launch date, do you have like an approximate date? Like when could people really expect to see the product live online approximately? 
approximately. We are like planning to do the first manufacturing in the first of uh, June, probably, because you know uh, when you when you are not manufacturing yourself, you have some specific times to for the product uh, production. So after that, perhaps we're going to need a, a month uh, because of the export and import situations and. I hope I hope we'll be able to launch and expand starting from July. Yeah, July 2024. So essentially that you're you're looking to raise money. Are you looking to manufacture in the UK or in Turkey? What does that look like? Uh, for the first one, we're going to uh, produce in Turkey. But the second, I don't know. I I'll, I have some people over there in the UK who can actually manufacture again. But like if I'm going to manufacture in turkey is going to be cheaper much cheaper because the turkey is like the home of every everything about sauces you know uh that's why it's cheaper to produce here but in future i don't know because if i'm going to be big sales or just pantry business in the uk i know i gotta be manufacturing in the uk because they just love product of england you know yeah yeah, I mean, also it's like you know, I mean, I'm not sure, like you know, import taxes and things like that. You know, might be an, it's like an extra expense. So also time, would, yeah, yeah, t- time. It's like exactly if you have a bunch of people that order, you can just produce and get it out very yeah, easily. Yeah. I mean, granted, Turkey's not that far from the UK, but still, it still makes a difference. So I guess in terms of right now, right, like, what would you say is the biggest challenge you're facing as you're about to launch this business? Biggest challenge is. It's going to sound some like political probably because uh, London became some kind of money laundering air, uh, area and most of them like uh, from Turkey, from Russia, you know. So they kind of hard on us uh, when it comes to bank issues. Like it used to just took maybe three to four days to open a business bank account or something like else, something like that. And now it takes almost six months. Yeah. That's crazy. So yeah, obviously now in 2024, many companies are looking for the best use case for things like AI. So do you guys use AI? And if not, maybe where could AI come in and add value to your business? For now, I am the R&D guy, mostly. So maybe TestWise or SpoonShot can help me to make some better products for the UK market specifically. But other than that, I'm just using daily for copywriting, for anything like for the website copy, for maybe uh, ad copy, anything about writing, because I used to be a writer, food writer. So I love just writing. And perhaps we'll be able to use for like anything about videos, images. Uh, But other than that, it can help us to reduce our cost, like when it comes to manufacturing the uh, inventory and anything else. I have a friend actually; he has a startup based in the uh, Germany. He has a it's called Fabricator, I think, and pr- probably we're going to be working with them to and enab- to make like inventory better and AI enabled. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. But have you thought about AI for like, you know, customer experience? Like if somebody has a question, since you are sort of a category creator that somebody has a question about the product, they can use yeah, the yeah. AI chat to like say, like, hey, it has these ingredients, you can find it here, etc. cetera. Yeah. Uh, do you know Havis Kitchen? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of yeah. yeah. They make a good case of it, uh, this one. So I'm playing something like this. Probably I'm just going to copy them. <laughs> yeah. So they have a good AI chat, but they're that. Yeah, using. yeah, especially when it comes to recipes or just maybe a basket builder, because the sauces are basically some a basket builder for the retailers. So it can also help us to get better in retail and maybe make suggestions to retailers because you know, um, just say tahini dressing. I'm uh, I just created the tahini dressing. It's really good. So it pairs really well with cold noodles, salads or anything about like sea, seafood. So if if I can just uh, counter, uh, like counter, counter like what? Like cross with uh, shelf them, like maybe just top of the like frozen, aisle, frozen uh, seafood aisle, something like this, or just salad aisle, or just maybe ready to get something like this, or just noodle aisle, just, just over there. If I can do that, and AI can help me to just, do that, I think. Yeah, I couldn't really go sentence. I think in here. Yeah, 
<laughs> no, for yeah. sure. I mean, I think AI, it's like, obviously there's lots of use cases, but, but I definitely think that it's like, if you, you know, I mean, a customer's questions or you can you know, answer questions about ingredients, like yeah, especially yeah, yeah, that's right. yeah. as, as you want to scale up, right? If you're going to sell in the U S yeah. if you look at 24 seven support, it'll be easier to answer questions. Yeah, especially uh, just trying to learn ManyChat at the moment. So ManyChat can really be helpful about this actually, especially on Instagram DMs. Yeah. For sure. You can so just you automate say, anything, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. So I guess what would you say is the one biggest piece of advice that you wish you knew before you started this business? Maybe I can talk about the first before business, that, like the yeah, hot sauce yeah, business. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Yeah, just don't raise a lot of money. <laughs> you know, I, I lost the control of the company. So I uh, lost my business. That's it, I think. Yeah. How much and, how much equity did you have when you were forced out? When I left? Uh, I had only 15%, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay, so, yeah. it was a unique situation because there were anything like, like any hot, like it was zero, the house house business in Turkey before I started actually. But there, there were never a house house business in Turkey because culturally the Turkish food is comes with sales actually, because it's, it's the way it's uh, arranged like for hundreds of years. So in the pandemic, I had started and there were lots of money in the table. Like everyone just wanted to give money to startups. So in, just before like big leap, I raised a million and that money actually stayed in the bank for a year almost. I couldn't do anything because we were sold out, you know, in the first year. I had to wait to spend the money <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> Do you still have equity or are they... Uh, no, you... I, I had some debt with the equity, so I had to get rid of it. So, yeah. Got it. Yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, yeah. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, entrepreneurship is all about learning and experiences. And I think especially now, you you learned a lot and you started this new company and you know, like you're launching it. And, 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 and I think... I, and the second one, don't try to build a big manufacturing area for the like made, made for the first few years you know it was just second year and like i had spent lots of money on just manufacturing i could do anything with that money actually maybe i don't know but it, it cost me a lot really right for sure so if we're going to have this conversation again in one year from now where do you see things going for your business actually uh, as i said it's really Easy to be in red retail in the UK if you have just some connection, which I have. So perhaps in a in a year, planning to hit at least a million uh, of pounds because it's actually like the Cornedo is not a real a new company. Actually, my co-founder was started Cornedo as a Amazon brand like a few years ago, and it's actually already a six-figure business like uh, for the last four years. So we have some have some our money and we have some traction and I have some good connection of angel investors. So it's going to be kind of easier than I thought this time. For sure. And we're rooting yeah. for you guys. So if somebody watching this wanted to reach out, do you mind sharing your website or social media? I guess best ways to get in contact with you. Yeah, my Instagram is Levont, Le, L-A-Y, we O N D. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just just reach out via LinkedIn, you know. It's John Coinger, but it's Ken actually. I uh, people call me Ken, actually, because it's Ken. Yeah, if you just reach out my LinkedIn, just ask anything you want, I I will answer. And I have some good inf information about US market also. Just anything anyone wanna reach, just reach out. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Of course, thanks. All right, bye. See you later.